and welcome. I'm so excited to bring you guys this tutorial video. I recently got a comment on one of my videos from Christina who asked how I paint hands. Hopefully you guys can get something out of this. And if you guys have any other requests for tutorials, feel free to leave those down in the comment section. All right, let's get into it, hands. So this video really is going to focus on how I draw hands observationally. Now, the good thing about this method is we all have hands, we can all take photos of our hands and easily pose them as reference. So that's why many artists, including myself, choose to draw from reference. That being said, there are still, uh, I would say, some rules for drawing the hand uh, that can really, really help to improve the way that your hand looks. So. Before I get into the demonstration, I'm just going to go over some basic rules for drawing the hand. First of all, I just want to say I'm not going to focus too much on exactly how to draw every single bone and every single muscle because that is something myself I'm still working on. But instead, I'm just going to focus on some basic rules that will help you along as you draw hands. So the first rule is to treat the fingers like three stacked cylinders. So the bottom cylinder is almost like half of the finger itself. So the bottom cylinder is half and then the next two are a quarter each. Thinking about the finger in this way will really help you to draw your lines, keeping that form in mind and will also help with your shading as well. It also helps just to break down something really complicated like the hand into simple shapes that you can imagine in your mind. The second rule is that the fingers do not form exactly straight lines, but the, the lines almost bow in towards the center. If you draw your hands with really straight lines, they're going to look a lot more unnatural. My my third tip is for the joints. So these don't form a straight line across the hand. Instead they form an arc and the arcs of uh, the three sets of knuckles each get wider towards the index finger. And my last tip for you guys is about the fingernails. Now the fingernails curve both across the nail and along the nail and the fingernail is about half the distance um, from the joint to the end. So knowing these rules will help you to stylize the way that you draw your hands in the future. So if you know that there's particular curves, you can exaggerate these and make them your own. All right, so moving on to the demonstration. The first step in drawing out the hand is to break it down in its large overall shapes. So for the hand, it's almost like this block-like structure with a long piece for the arm. So start off with that and then break it down into smaller and smaller shapes. At this stage, I also find, although I'm not showing it on camera here, I just find it really helpful to rotate your image 90 degrees, check it against the reference photo. So basically your eyes are like refreshed and I find that really, really helps to pick out any inaccuracies. And then your third step would be adding those detailed lines which show the curve and form of the hand and fingers. And when you're drawing these, it's good to stick to your reference photo as closely as possible. All right, so once you've got your accurate pencil drawing down, I have started by doing an overall wash of yellow on the lightest tones of the picture. So I'm approaching painting this the way that I do any sort of painting, and that is to start from light to dark. So um, if you've watched my skin tones tutorial, you know my preferred method for creating skin tones. And this method can really be used for any kind of skin tone. So because the skin is primarily like an orange brown color, I find that you look at the orange brown color and you think about what colors make up that. So the lightest shade within that would be yellow. So that's why I normally start off with a warm yellowy base. And then what colors would contribute to the darker tones would be your reds. And then for the shadows, I think about what is opposite on the color wheel, which would be blues. So that is why I follow sort of a 
yellow, red, blue formula for, for painting skin tones. But I go through that in more detail in my skin tones video. So if you haven't seen that, go and check that out. I will leave a link for that right here and in the description. You're not too worried about drawing in the faint lines and details just yet. You're just, just really focusing on doing the overall form. So sometimes when you're painting, I often find it difficult when you're looking at a reference photo to break it down exactly where the lights, the mid-tones and the darks are. So one tip that I find really useful is to put your reference photo in Photoshop and use the posterize function to break down the image into more easily digestible chunks. Then once I've done a good attempt at all of the shading of the form, then I will go in with the small details like the wrinkles or lines. guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed that video i am just so stoked to have you guys in, as an audience i know i mentioned it in my last video that i'm really really stoked that i got to a thousand subscribers but i just want to say again <laughs> because it means so much to me i know i'm not a super consistent youtuber but to actually have an audience is awesome <laughs> so thank you so much for subscribing that really means the world to me and also i love reading all of your lovely comments um yeah feel free to ask me any art related questions i would love to hear what you guys are up to and i really am going to focus this next month and just try and put my head down stop procrastinating and just do art and make videos so i'm really hoping that i can post more consistently. I'm saying it here so you guys can hold me accountable. <laughs> Alright, bye guys. See you next time.